Hi there, hope you're having a wonderful day. I know I am. Welcome to Reality Facts and welcome to this video. Today we're going to talk about chemtrails. But to kick this video off, I'm going to do a little experiment to see if we can make the very stuff that chemtrails are made out of inside this jar. Now, if you wish to repeat this experiment, you will need a glass jar with a metal lid, some ice cubes, a cigarette lighter or some matches or some other combustible that you can burn inside the top of the jar, and some boiling water. Now, a little disclaimer, any children out there that wish to repeat this experiment, please get adult supervision. I cannot stress how important that is. Boiling water can burn, it is very dangerous. Uh, burning things like match using matches and cigarette lighters are dangerous also. You could burn your house down, you could burn yourself, you could burn each other. So please get adult supervision before conducting this experiment. So, let's get to the experiment. We've got our jar sitting here. We need to put some boiling water inside the jar. And I want to heat the jar up, so I'm going to fill it up close to the top. Then I'm going to tip the majority of the water out. Now just be careful, do not grab the glass jar close to the bottom where the boiling water is, or use some oven gloves or a tea towel to prevent you from getting burnt. I just grabbed it near the rim so that I wasn't actually in contact with the hot portion of the glass. Now we need to burn our combustible near the top of the jar. A little bit, and then we put the lid on nice and tight. We place ice cubes on top of the jar. And all of this is to simulate the heat from the engine and the water vapor from the engine and the combusted gases from the engine. And as you can see in the jar there, we have a foggy substance coming down from the, the top of the, the jar up near the lid down towards the bottom that's flowing in a downward motion. And as we can see, that jar is now full of that gas and that's, or that, that vapor, that uh, water droplets more or less that are floating in the air mixed with combusted fuel. And that is what chemtrails form from. That is the very thing that a chemtrail forms from. You can see inside that jar. So if I put my hand behind it, you can see that it's fogged up, just like a cloud. So this is what chemtrails are made out of. A little bit of burnt fuel and some water vapor that have been trapped in the upper atmosphere where it is very cold and that vapour forms and it stays formed, much like it is in this situation. So call them chemtrails or call them contrails. I mean, really they are chemical in a sense. You've got spent fuel, which is hydrocarbons. They've, on a molecular level, you know, they've had through burning and combustion, they've had oxygen mixed with them. This forms of water, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and various other elements. There's some unburnt fuel that makes it through the process. And, you know, these are the things that actually form a contrail or a chemtrail, depending on what you want to call. Now, I don't believe there's any poison um, deliberately mixed in with the fuel or there's no sprayers on the planes or anything like that like they're not like crop dusting the air it's just it just happens that the the fuels have chemicals in them involved in the combustion process those chemicals aren't super harmful to us i'm sure at high enough levels they would be toxic but 
you know, they're no more toxic than the gases that come out of the exhaust pipe of a car and they drive past every day. The visible part of the contrail or chemtrail is the part that I'm concerned with, the part that we could see in this experiment. And the reason why I'm concerned with this, you know, one jet flyover that leaves a contrail or chemtrail behind is not a big concern. But when you get dozens and dozens of planes flying over and the conditions are right for these things to form, we end up with artificial cloud. And artificial cloud can cause local uh, climate change temporarily. And I mean, over an ongoing period, that leads to a sort of a semi-permanent climate change. I mean, you have clouding, which causes reduced light. It can reduce the heat of a day significantly, or it can actually uh, increase the heat of a day depending on what time of day these contrails form and, and spread out, you know, and the amount of them that's, that's actually in the air. So, I mean, there is, a, there is a concern. I do have a concern about it in that respect. Uh, it could be artificially cooling local environments and actually masking uh, global warming, possibly. I mean, if we had a clear day where there was no, no jets flying over, I wonder how warm it would actually get as compared to what it would have gotten with the jets flying over. So, you know, it really flies a lot of questions up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I've cleared some of this up, that there's no big conspiracy to poison us all, that there's no big conspiracy that they're deliberately seeding the atmosphere with cloud making material to make it rain. They're not trying to poison our crops. They're not doing anything crazy deliberately, but there is a, a kind of a uh, sideline effect, a, uh, a side effect of the jets flying over, and that is that these contrails, or chemtrails as some refer to them as, are moderately altering our climate, regardless of whether you know, people are trying to do it or not. That's what's really happening. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't hesitate to subscribe. Have a great day. Any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll see you later. Have fun.